property. So I'm going to create this um, new site within uh, this domain, which is cognitivescience.co, which is just the domain that I got. The same way you guys have Perts. So you can actually register Perts.net with um, Google Apps. And what that pretty much does is kind of like a little mini business. You get all of Google's applications, but you get them in the context of um, of Perts. So you could, everyone could have Perts emails and so on. Um, but also it allows some pretty good sharing across people. Uh, you can actually look in here for different templates for sites. So featured, um, this is one actually that just, you can just copy the template from that I sent you before. Um, that's like some of the templates we had within the domain. And you can sort of just like poke around and see, well, schools and education, blah, 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 and so on, uh, clubs and organizations. I think there's tons of functionality in here. And the kind of advantage of taking a site and modifying it is that you're going to see a lot of that, you know. Um, that would be useful for one aspect of fruits. Uh, but let me look for business collaboration just to start. Uh, yeah, project tracking, um, hmm. training site. Okay. See what that looks like. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, this is a great template, but I'm just not sure if this is actually what you guys want. Okay, so a bunch of good functions on these, but I think maybe after these, this thing might just be to build one. So I'll do that. Okay, blank template. And I'll let you guys decide on the theme and everything. Um, okay, I'm going to edit this sidebar. Okay, so I'm automatically just organized navigation. I find it's useful because whenever a new page is added, it automatically goes in the sidebar. The only problem is that um, then stuff is done alphabetically and I haven't figured out how to get around it. You can add more stuff to the sidebar where there's just like text, um, recent activity, um, some kind of countdown days, who owns the site, whatever. Um, you can customize the footer links. Okay, changing site layout. 
that's like stuff you want to add to the header you can add a horizontal navigation bar to so along the top instead and um, put in so on you can also change the theme uh, general look of the site configure search so this is actually super useful because you can set up this thing to search not just the site but also Google Drive and all kinds of custom options. That's what happens underneath them. Um, custom search. Google Custom Search is pretty useful. Okay. Uh, um, and the thing is you can make page templates. So right now they've got Announcements, but just gives a little mini list of announcements that people can make, special kind of plays. File cabinet, you can upload files. A list is kind of useful, it just creates a, a sort of object where you can put entries, like entries in a list, and you can have different variables and so on that are a part of it. Start pages like iGoogle, um, but for every, everyone can customize their own. And stand the web page. You can create your own templates, which is super useful because then you can. Um, get people who are sort of new or, or working on something to follow the same structure that people have before them. Um, so let's create a page template. And the simplest thing that I found have been really useful are going to be um, so the base thing is I'm going to insert a table of contents. Uh, I'm going to leave it with no width, so just push it right across. And what that does is that I can have headings. For example, um, heading one, heading two, heading three. Actually, it's, it's more like two, but for whatever reason. Four. So now if I go ahead and format, right now it's normal text, we'll make it a heading. One is that it can have some pre-assembled kind of formatting that you can set, however you like. The other is that now Google Docs has kind of recognized what it is, the same way you would for like LaTeX or something. Uh, let me add the subpage listing and I'll come back to that. But in general, you can search tons of stuff, images, links, um, horizontal lines, gadgets, uh, any kind of HTML and JavaScript object that you sort of stick in, and then um, Google Sites will have has a bunch of pre-assembled ones, um, and you can also sort of make your own. So, for example, recently added list items, some kind of text box, an HTML box, which is where you can find any kind of little HTML and JavaScript thing that you want to run, because Google Sites doesn't actually allow you to um, put JavaScript directly into the source because of the security issue. If you click on more gadgets, you can browse this whole kind of little mini marketplace of people who've made them, and if you make um, them, you can then actually um, add. Um, add it to this sort of repository and reuse it. This would be useful for things like having people donate, um, you know, following, Twitter and all that stuff. I think you guys don't have a social media presence now, but you could create one easily like that. Okay. Uh, so what I want to insert was, yeah, you can put a calendar in, chat, doc, any Google Doc can be embedded. And this is really useful for sort of being able to update things really easily in real time, because then as the Google Docs are based, automatically published. Uh, drawings groups so the previous discussion right now you could actually convert it to be in a group where people could sort of see what's been put up uh, presentations um, so actually you could put that in presentations up spreadsheets and spreadsheet forms so you can actually have people fill out forms online just like you've been doing on the previous website and video YouTube and so on can be embedded uh, so what I actually wanted is if there was a sub page listing and it just lists whatever is a sub page of um, the current page okay, show all levels you know, just Push right across, you can choose your friends format. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's a decent um, sort of organization for a page. Like a, a useful kind of template. Okay, so now here's what you see automatically, you've got this table of contents, and you can just sort of jump up to it whenever you want. And so just by designating that, people can like actually have different levels of settings, which is a nice automatic thing. I'm actually also going to, by going to template settings, uh, allow attachments so people can attach a file directly to the page or to comment on a page, which is nice. Um, but 
what I wanted to do actually was make that the default. You can see revision history of the site. I want to make that the default um, page. So I think I might just have to go back to the or more. No? All right, let me just go oh let me just go back to the site. Templates are sort of stored in a kind of different place. Yes, yeah, so page templates. Now I have a user find one. I'm actually going to make that the default. Okay, so by default, everyone's going to sort of create one of those. And that's really useful. I'll save a lot of time in duplicating. I mean, my one complaint is Google Sites can be a bit slow. Okay, so here I create a new item. There are also a shortcut, as you can see there. Okay. Uh, oh, that's sorry. That was actually just to edit the page. If I want to create a new page, uh, group. That actually, I'm not going to use content stuff. I'm just going to insert a Google group here. I don't want to put it under there. I want it to be at own level. Okay, edit it. Yep, is that it's ready. Insert. Now I'm actually just going to insert that Google group. Um, Groups.google.com. Let me see if I can get groups up there. I have to change what I'm signing as. Okay, let me just take the gadget in. So I'm going to insert a forum or group. And it's a gadget. You can preview and so on. Um, height. Yeah, I think that's useful. Show a search box. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so this actually is um, where you put in the correct URL. I'm not sure if this is it. Yeah, that's it. Um, so you can stick that in and then people can sort of just look at it. You'll be able to see that once you log in because you actually remember. And I could if I just changed what I logged in as. Like if I logged in there, I'd be able to see it. Okay. Um, let me think. Actually, so actually, I want to change this page type just to show you something, which was um, a change page template. So I'm actually make this a file cabinet. I'm going to overwrite what's already there. Okay, so you can add files. So the idea is that you can just sort of like stack up a bunch of items and stick them in here. And um, it's a really easy way to sort of collect things in one place. And it's like an object design for that. Another kind of useful thing could be um, to make a new page. Oops. Again, I meant to make that actually a different kind. So you can choose different kinds of lists. Uh, you've got suggested ones, but let's just actually create our own. So the idea is you make columns or fields. So for example, this could be um, funding source. It's going to be a text, URL, or a drop down where you can choose all options. Checkbox to say it's done, a date. Let's do the text. Um, let's add another column, which is going to be web page. And that's where you, you put a URL. And it could be. Um, Deadline for the date. Okay, and you can sort it by different things. So when it's created, you can sort based these individual variables um, and so on. You can add another sort by okay. Then you just add an item. Or you can choose one of the internet pages, deadline. Let's just say it's always 20 seconds. Okay, 
Um, and the type of item I think will actually be used the most frequently is just going to be something for organizing information. For example, um, uh, mindset project. Okay, so for the top level, I'm just going to create this. So we're going to use something like um, goal. Now I actually want to change this to heading two. Um, okay, and then you can have various information underneath. What would be useful too is that um you can always start off with like using one page as much as possible with just a table of contents. But once you find there's just too much content to manage, at that point, just make pages and just make them a sub page. So the idea would be this would be like relevant literature. I'm going to make it like that as well and put it under the mindset project. Create it here. And so now what you can see is it's just nested there automatically. Um, even get rid of these headings if you want, and you can just start pasting references. Like, if you don't want it to be a heading, just go to format, normal paragraph text. Okay. There's some great shortcuts too. Yeah, and once that's in there, um, in Mindset Project, you'll get your table of contents. Plus, you'll also just be able to see, like, oh, this is the sub pages. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working. Let me check this gadget. That's uh, the current page. Oh, oops, okay. So the problem is I left it with a zero. I'll leave it empty. Okay, great. So yeah, that has its full stuff features. I, mean, I think those are some of the basic ones. I think you can see looking at this moving forward, um, pretty much you could treat this exactly like Google Doc, except that this is going to be easier to use and then you get immediately jumping forward. Plus, the sub page structure is going to be really useful. The biggest thing I actually have realized is. In using a Google site, it's better not to treat it like a library where you put stuff and you have to find it, but actually just to get in the habit of searching. So the idea is that when people make pages, they should just try and think, well, what search would get us to that? So for example, literature, you search a site, and it'll bring you there. Um, mindset, it'll sort of bring up all the things with mindset, right? And so when people join a, a new site, they could just sort of search for those key terms and it brings up those hits. And then over time, people can sort of change, you know, how they write out the keywords and so on, so that a new person, by typing reasonable things, can find the stuff that they need to. Okay? And you can also set this up to search through Google Docs automatically as well. So I can show you how to do that.